Hey everybody, this is Dr. Ben Pearl with Fit Foot You. Today, we've got a really interesting episode. I'm with Dominic Bianco. He is president of Bianco Instrumentation, and he's gonna be talking to us about maintenance of our podiatry instruments, repair when needed, and selection of podiatry instruments. He is hails from Brooklyn. I'm from upstate New York, so we got the New York connection. Yep. Currently here in, where, where, what's this town that we're in? This is Cat Harp in Virginia. And right in your shop, you've got yeah, a, a, a homespun shop. shop that's amazing. We're gonna take Thank a look you. at the downstairs later. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna take a little factory tour. So let's talk about instrument selection first. I want you to lead the categories about why we select certain ones and the important nuances of selecting instruments. Well, I think the, you know, one of the main categories that uh, we cover, I guess, is nail cutting, right? Which is probably predominant, um, although the nurses are getting into a little bit more of it now. Uh, wound care, right? And wound care is big. And, you know, basically you never know what's gonna show up in your, in your practice. You know, somebody could, be, could step on a piece of glass and then have, you have to try to get it out. Uh, a tick, uh, certain things that, you know, you need super fine instruments, you know, to work on. And you have to have a selection on hand. Because well, you got, yeah, you, you got really one, can't... forceps. So tell me about that. I recently purchased a, a foreign body forceps and, and yeah. tell us about the different types and uh, why would you pick one over the other? Okay, well, there's, there's several different types. One of them may be a little bit smaller than the other. One of them may be a little bit finer point. Um, the government seems to like these. They, they give them to the to the uh, the army and, and navy guys, just in case they get a tick or something on them that they can. You know, that looks like it could pull a splinter out pretty well as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. It could actually get under the skin slightly. Uh, it's, same thing with with this one as a stiletto type. It can actually break the skin. It could get under it. It can it could pull. Um, they're made really to pull hair and not quite foreign bodies, but you know, pulling wood, which is a little bit soft, could, could be a, no problem. The biggest problem though, is when you get a piece of wood under your nail, because you have really no way of getting on the top and the bottom to get it out. And even if you can, it kind of grabs in there and it's so hard. And what I suggest is to kind of go this way against the nail and then be able to pull it out. If Very that good. ever happens, that's one of the tricks that I've learned being an avid woodworker as well. Let's move on to surgical pickups. If you don't have them here, it's fine, but what, what can you tell us about selection of well, hats and browns versus others? Well, they have one over two pickups, and then they have them serrated, and they have multiple tooth pickups. I only make the one over two. But and I noticed but that I, one is uh, serrated with holes. Tell us about that for well, measurements. This is, yeah. Not for measurements, but for grip, especially when you're wearing gloves and, you know, and, and, it, and, and you know, how they open and close, the softness of it, you could, you could feel it's, it's Handles not, well. you know, it's not, it's not so hard that you can't, you, you know, you have to be able to mm -hmm. be able to work with it. The, um, you know, one over two is very, very popular because you could pick up a piece of skin, you could pull it over and you could work, you can use it as a, uh, as a retractor kind of, you know. Let's move on to, uh, unless there's something else you want to say about pickups, to uh, nail instrumentation. That's, that's the bread and butter, what we do. Okay, bread and butter. It's just true. Here's your bread and butter. It's right there. Five, five inch, five and a half inch instrument, uh, medium point, uh, box lock. And this one is the reasonable priced one. This is not crazy price. And, and you again, were nice and, nice and soft in your hand. It's perfect. Fits yeah. in your hand well. Yeah. You were bringing up some points about hand strength and wear and tear on our joints. Tell us a little bit about that. <clears throat> males versus females. Obviously, males tend to have bigger hands. What are some of the things that we should look for with uh, the size of what we're purchasing? So different instruments have different designs. We have, we have some that um, uh, kind, kind of come all the way around. They have a, a smaller grip to it. Okay, and then maybe sometimes they have a clip on the bottom, right? And those are easier to get around because they're a little bit smaller. But I actually make them a little bit smaller to begin with. And, you know, so that they're able to grip around. Now, for women podiatrists, uh, a lot of them don't have giant hands. Four and a half inch instrument as opposed to a five. 
or a four inch. A lot of doctors like four inch instruments because they fit in their hand better. But those are more delicate. You have a tendency to break them faster, you know, because they're, they're much, much smaller. And then, you know, when you start getting into bigger and thicker nails, you need a bigger and thicker sure. uh, nail cutter. But you don't necessarily have to go to bolt cutters, which a lot of doctors do. It's a mistake because, and I'm, I'm, I like selling double actions because of the money, but you got a lot more working parts to it. And the more working parts you put to something, the more chance you have of something breaking down. So let's say you have a patient that negligent nails. They're a quarter inch or more. Mm -hmm. What's going to be your go-to for that that you're going to recommend for uh, taking pressure off as you're, as you're cutting the nail? What, what? Six inch or better. The six inch, uh, what we call a 007, or a, uh, you could go with a, with a double action, right? But even a double action, you know, a lot of them don't even open up that wide that you can get you know, a giant nail in there. So it makes it even more difficult. They're originally designed for bone cutting, small bone cutting, and not for nails. They incorporated it into nails later on. So to summarize, you're thinking that with the, the right diameter, you don't necessarily need a double action for these nails if they're properly sharpened. And that's what we're going to get to oh, in a minute. Absolutely, because when you have yeah. anything that's dull against dull, the only thing you're going to do is create more trauma. You could create trauma in your hand, or you could create trauma on the patient. Or both. You have a couple other categories you want to review here with us. Yes. What else you got? Wound care. Wound care is big because, I mean, a lot of guys use blades, which are good. Blades is nice and sharp, but we also offer tissue nippers. And tissue nippers, a lot of guys are afraid of because, but believe it or not, a really good sharpened tissue nipper can clean a wound better and leave it in better condition. And also it would heal faster, which is the end result here because... A lot, a lot of blades, they leave it where it's, you know, where, where it's a little bit jagged, where this will make it nice and nice and smooth. And you can see how they Beautiful. They really made... Now, the other thing, and, and, you, and you probably know this with uh, the direction that Medicare is going with documentation, you have to be very specific now about the type of tissue nipper you're using when you're doing sharp debridement. So it will... Hmm be necessary to specify exactly what you're using. So it's good that you have these things on board for the, the depth use, of the wound. Most of them just use a, you know, a number three scalpel handle with a blade on it or a beaver handle. Um, but I think, you know, after having, I guess, many, many things in my hands and trying to pick stuff out of my hands, I always reach for my cuticle nipper. It just seems to be better to for, for what we do, and for the new practitioner and even the season, we get these cheaper bulk blades from Pakistan. What, what's your thought on blades? What, what should we be doing in terms of blade selection? Well, there's, there's lots of manufacturers that make blades. Unfortunately, I don't make blades, but any kind of German blade, American blade, like, you know, if, if you buy razors, Gillette, right? They make the best blades. Why? They know what they're doing. They've been making them for 100 years. The original patents are from Gillette. So, yeah, it's hard to beat anything from Pakistan, China, price-wise. But they don't work as well. If you can get Swedish blades or German blades, they're obviously going to be way better. Let's they, last, they last longer. You mm -hmm. know, And it depends. If you're using it for one time, you're throwing it away, and then it doesn't really matter much, right? Mm -hmm. But if you, if, you, if you do repetitive processes with it, you can sterilize it in between. They are stainless. Sure. Let's move on to scissors. You've got you've got a variety here. You've got some wound uh, scissors well, or banded bandage, scissors. Bandage scissors, felt scissors, and this is just uh, you know this is just a typical podiatry kit. You know anything that you you need to grab like a little a little piece of nail. You need a, a really fine hemostat to get in in the corners. Um, pack of spatulas. I know we're going to be getting this. These are really handy for for mm -hmm. all podiatrists. I don't care. They they. That's one of the most useful tools, and I also make it with an elevator, so you can actually get under the nail and up. Um, you know, uh, felt scissors. These are, these are small felt scissors. We make them larger, 
with instruments, uh, and we'll get into maintenance. And we also like, have. Oh, go ahead. We also have bigger ones. I'm sorry. We also have bigger ones, and um, big, real big ones. Because what happens is, you could be cutting a really thick piece of felt, and and, and the same leverage applies to felt as it would to nails. You know, longer handle, shorter blade. You have more leverage. And you make both left and right-handed uh, instruments. For, uh, for scissors? Not on scissors. Only, not on right, scissors. only right handed, unfortunately, because left handed, everything has to be backwards. So my machinery is not set up backwards yet. I only have a limited amount of space. So Do yeah. most lefties uh, learn to adapt then to. Yes. And usually the way that they learn to adapt, which is strange, is that they put their fingers all the way in the hole and they have to. I could do it with my left hand because. So in, a, a, a righty would push it right. naturally. Right. A lefty would pull it. So this would be pulling back. And that's how a left-handed would, would cut with a right-handed scissor. And it makes it very difficult because once they get accustomed to doing that, then it's very difficult to go back to using a, a real left-handed scissor for them because then they're, they're doing the opposite motion of what they're normally used to doing. Any other instruments you want to review with selection before we move on to maintenance? Um, well, maybe maybe curettes or something like that. I mean, sure. we have rasps and curettes. Um, of course, uh, minimal incision bone rasps are always important because you never know how close you're going to have to get in there. So we thin them out and make them nice and nice and small. And of course, you know, your curettes. They're they're not quite thermal curettes, but they are good for thermal stuff. And fantastic. Anything on the sides cleaning out and that's a, a one over two which is uh, one side is one millimeter the other side is two millimeter because you don't know how and it's easier to pick up one than it is to pick three. now let's move on to maintenance you've got some great tips that you're going to review with us okay. um, let's start with the most important things first most important thing is to follow I guess the, the, the basic manufacturers uh, guidelines of the sterilization method that you're doing and the best thing I can tell you is stainless steel stains less than regular steel. And most of us, of course, are doing autoclaves in this day and age. There's very few guys right. doing cold sterilization. Right. Some people still do. So how do you get them to really stain less? You got to keep them dry. Dry is the key. Um, the same instruments that I make, if I have, if one comes back and it's, you know, sometimes we have to warranty them, they broken or they're just too far gone i'll actually make fishing lures out of the handles and on the boat they will rust and i try to figure out why they're rusting on the boat and it's because we didn't wipe them off after we took them out of the water and the salt water is very corrosive and it just leaves stains and the next thing you know become they become rusty and then even the atmosphere right, right? the atmosphere too but once we once we wipe them what we have to do is dry them then then they they last for a much, much, uh, they, they last indefinitely. They don't, they don't tarnish at all, and they stay shiny. Because we polish them for fishing hooks. Okay, Dom, so what can we do proactively to prevent corrosion and rust? Well, there's a, there's a bunch of things we can do besides, you know, just uh, basically following manufacturers' uh, specifications on, that they give you on every bottle. But I also found this stuff, which is amazing. And what this does is it, it's uh, citric acid. It's a, it's a special blend of citric acid. And what this thing does is it, um, it passivizes it. Stellar Solutions, it's yeah, called? Stellar Solutions, passiv passivation, uh, and cleaning for stainless. And, and basically, passivation removes all the external uh, particles on the steel that's left after we grind it or polish it or or do anything to stainless, there's always something left over from underneath and that removes it so it becomes more stainless, if that makes sense. But sure. you get less rusting with passivation than you do without it. The key, as you mentioned, is stain less. What are some mistakes we can make with what we might use? Like using this type of oil, household oil. This is, this is kind of smelly. Obviously, this is old. I don't use it obviously once in a while this has its uses but it helps not on instruments 
What is the proper lube? <coughs> proper lube, mineral oil. It's very, very basic. And, um, you know, we, we sell it in, in little jars like this. It has a little a little spout. It don't leak all over the place. It's, it's actually quite ingenious. Um, but, you know, it's clear. It's, uh, it, it has no, no smell, no taste. And, you know, and it's perfect for exactly what we use it for, for instruments. And a lot of times your instruments in between will get sticky. That helps also. Um, you know, keeping them dry. And, you know, if you're using wet stabilization, 20 minutes in, supposed to be 20 minutes out. A lot of doctors keep them in there all day long. At the end of the day, you got to take them out. You have to rinse them off. You have to dry them. If you don't do that, you, you automatically start deterioration. Yeah, I'm in a slop tools. sink or whatever. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. gotta, you gotta, you gotta take care of them. They'll take care of you. You know, otherwise, yeah, you're gonna get disappointed because you're gonna come in one day and you say, well, "What happened to my instruments? They're all, they're all full of stains. They're all full of rust." Perfect. So now let's take a look over at the station that we've got set up over there. You're gonna go over we'll some go nuances some of uh, selection yeah. for instrumentation. And after that, we'll do some uh, some maintenance. We'll show you a little bit about maintenance and you know how uh, all the different parts and stuff and you know what it's all about. Perfect. Okay, Ben. So I pulled out a whole bunch of instruments for you guys to look at because you know, like I like I said, you know, some doctors like four inch ones, some like double action bolt cutters. And, um, you know, the basic, what I tried to explain before was, is the leverage, the length of the handle as opposed to the blade. Put that right in the camera, Dom, so they can see, see what you mean by that. Length of handle, you know, compares to the length of blade. So how much, you know, force would you have with this as opposed to something like this? You have a lot more force with this because the handles are longer. Same thing applies to nail cutters. What's the average wear time for the average practice in 20 patients a day? Uh, they're not all going to be nails, of course. Right, but let's say you were doing nails. 20, 20 patients a day. Uh, obviously, they have most of them have 10. Uh huh. Right, and then we're talking 200 nails a day. Right. How much do you want this thing to do? Do you want it to work for a month, two months, three months? That's a lot of work with these two little blades. Three months, four months, at 20 patients a day, seven days a week, over five days a week, that's an awful lot of nails. So how does the process work then for sharpening? Well, I know we're gonna get more into yeah. that later, but uh, they, they send them to you. They wrap them up, put them in a box, they send them to me. Um, the charge is minimal. We, we, for my brand, it's six dollars. Other brands, it's ten dollars. Uh, we have all the springs, all the replacement parts. Um, everything is uh, hand filed, hand finished, and then I, I repolish the instrument, take all the crud out as much as I can, and, and send you back. What you would be amazed, looking like a brand new instrument. And we're gonna get into that too a little bit downstairs when you show some right. of the simple processes that you do in the workshop. Right, and then also, you know, design, design of the handles. You can see how this one feels. Yeah, it's, you got the, the tactile grip. As opposed to this one, right? This is a little bit softer. It closes a little bit more in your hand. This one is a little bit rounder. I feel like I can manipulate this a little easier. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And this, is, this is a staple for the industry. And then, of course, you know, this is a $90 instrument. Yeah, this is a $90 instrument also. And I feel this one. So this one is about $40. Yeah, yeah, you feel, and a it's different a difference bit, in the springs too then a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. In the spring, a little bit different in the spring, a little bit different everything, but this is still a workhorse. Even at 40 bucks, you cannot beat this. There's no way. And, and stainless steel on top. Okay, uh, before we go downstairs, anything else you want to highlight? No, let's just, um, I can show them a little bit of difference between the two, like, fine point. Yep. Okay. And medium point. So medium point has more beef 
right where you need it. And and yet they are. Show them in the camera. I, I'm trying. Yep, there you go. So right where you need it the most is at the point. Fine points are good, especially when you have to get into, you know, uh, doing ingrowns, right? But over over usage, make them spread. We put them back into place. But this, yeah, because it has more beef in it. You can still get in. You can still, you know, and, and a lot of companies don't make the fine point this way. Okay, they make them where they're, they're kind of really, really oval. And so you really can't use them for that purpose. Whereas I, this is multi, multi-use. Sure, sure. Okay, and then of course we go down, all the way down to a four-inch instrument. Isn't that cute? Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, fifth toenails. But, yep. But you know what? If you get if you get children in your place, yeah, and you pull out this, you could have scared them. <laughs> they could have gone. Ah! Yeah. You know? Could you imagine pulling this out on a child? Sure. So now we're gonna look behind the scenes in the workshop. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see what you got. You've got like a whole setup. Yep. So it's going to be fun. All right. Let's do that. This All right. The click and clack or the Bob Vila segment of uh, the workshop. This You're is gonna, it. Yeah. This, this is, is awesome, man. You've got like how many of these uh, grinding wheels do you have? It's eight, ten, uh, two big ones and a belt grinder and some custom, uh, custom stuff that I've done. Uh, try to, you know, keep uh, improving, improving and, and, you know, growing and learning more and more. So you're gonna you're gonna show us something in action, maybe a, a, a basic maintenance of, yeah, uh, sure. of grinding or yeah, yeah. okay, it's real easy. Yeah, I think I'm gonna shadow cam you, so we'll okay. we'll do that next. You should right, start sir. on a station. All right, let's uh, let's go. Okay. Let's start off with some of the parts because the parts. This is just a different selection of nipper screws for all different types of nippers. Amazing. Okay. And then... You got to pick the, those up with some of your forceps, huh? Yeah, I, I, I do. Nimble fingers. And then, of course, we have more. Because one one bucket isn't enough. And some of these things are for hairdressing scissors. They're a little bit mixed in here. But I have also... Everything is marked what it is. Mark of a good technician is he's got good organization. That's great. Different types of nail splitter springs, from small to big. Now you mentioned you'll reinforce the springs. I think you did that with some of mine. You well, put in a couple small screws to reinforce well, them. Well, in, your, in one of yours, you didn't have any springs. He had a special nail cutter that had no springs, and and it, oh, the spring broke, and so what we had to do is redrill it and put a spring and put two springs in it so that you could actually work with it, because otherwise it was... Yeah, you do all kinds of custom stuff when always, needed. Always doing custom stuff. We can make springs. We have everything from barrel springs to extremely large springs. Mm -hmm. Barrel springs, all different. And, and I have different size barrel springs, too, because not everybody takes the same size. Uh, these are double action uh, screws for the sides of the, in the front and the back of the double actions. So everything has a, a place, everything has a purpose. There's a million, million parts here. And this helps me, you know, uh, fix the instruments as they come in. And a lot of them come in. Now you're gonna, you're gonna do a little sharpening 101 for us? I have, a, I, have a, I have a really basic question for you first. What is your answer to, why don't I just use a grinding stone? How can we screw up our instruments if we use that approach? Obviously, we don't have the precision of the angle, the experience, but tell us a little bit about that. Well, so I've been around, the, I've been doing this since I'm nine years old, and I've fixed probably in my lifetime a half a million instruments from grinders and people just decided to wake up one morning and said, I'm going to sharpen my scissors today. Please don't do that. <laughs> it makes my life harder. Uh, you know, it, uneven uh, it, grinding of the metal. Yeah, and it's even not. Guys, it's not going to come together. Even tool and die guys have tried. Tool and die guys who were good at what they did, professional, 
could not master this industry. This industry is super, super hard, super critical. I'll give you a, you know, it's, it's about feel. And I could teach you how to sharpen something, but I can't teach you how to feel. That feel will come over time, but it takes a long, long time, two, three years possibly. You know? It's kind of like the learning curve for learning diagnostic ultrasound because you have a probe, everybody knows anatomy, but it's the feel of the pressure up against the tissue and then recognizing your, 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 your how far you're pushing, how far you're pushing yeah. and recognizing visually where you are yeah. as to that touch. Feel is, is, is so important and yeah, you know, some people have a great feel for things, some people don't, but this is something that's acquired over many many times of doing it every single day it's not something that's going to you know just happen overnight let's chop it up so you, you so got here, something that you can show us so here, just this, an example of well, uh, your basic has, sharpen or? this one here has been sharpened many many times uh probably uh i would say probably around eight or nine times you can see the difference between the the sizes of the blades you know and yeah you know, this one, this one is still hasn't been sharpened. Um, and you can see how it's kind of overlapped. You know, they're, they're loose. Can you give us a, a sample of... And this uh, one here, the spring mm -hmm. is broken. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this one here. And this one's a little bit sticky. It doesn't quite work well. First thing we do is we're going to oil it a little bit. We're going to see if we can break up that stickiness. And, and how I work it back and forth. Okay. You're like the Bob Vila of podiatry instruments. Well, just, Tom. you know, just <laughs> that alone makes a huge difference. And you, you, I showed you this earlier, this one. This was the one that was sticky. And you can see now it's, it's not sticky anymore. It's Beautiful. You know, it opens and closes a little bit, so I'm going to push them down a little bit, those, those, those springs. I don't like anything that's too hard because you guys have to work with this all day long. So anything that's too, too hard in your hand, you know, puts more pressure on you during the course of the day. And now that I loosened it up real nice, you know, she'll work just fine like that. Now, usually you're doing this uh, late at night or early in the morning, no, listening to music or what? Well, mostly, that's why I got rubber on the floors. <laughs> <laughs> this way it doesn't destroy the points. Uh, most of the time, uh, service is done Tuesdays, Tuesday morning. Uh, the best light is in the morning for me here. Um, every place is different. At night, there is no light, so I, I don't do this type of work which you're going to see at night i do scissors at night other things but not not nail cutters not nippers can't do it at night i could do the shaping of them which i do a lot of shaping of them you know when i make them so i could do processes prior to uh sharpening and 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 setting them up and, and shape you know and and the real fine work that i need the outside light and we're going to show you that right now okay let's go to let's go to this Because this one here was too tight and we loosened it up so she works nice. She didn't, it didn't need a, what do you call it? Uh, it didn't need to be retightened, but we, we have tools to retighten them as well. And, and like the other one needed to be retightened. Re I have to adjust my chair. You know, this chair is a little bit low. Now, what I'm looking for are lumps and holes. And then I look to feel for a, for a little bit of an edge on the outside. And then we do the other side. How long you had these set of files? Yeah. You know what? Just like a podiatrist has to maintain his tools and change his tools every once in a while, these files don't last forever. And I have a pile of old ones that just don't work anymore. 
I don't, I, I, if I push too hard all day long, just like a podiatrist, squeezing instruments very, very hard all day long, you hurt your hands. The goal here is to be able to retire and we want to play golf. <laughs> we want to, we want to go fishing, you know, yeah. we're, what are we going to, we're going to be crippled when we right, get old. Right, right. So we don't want to work like, like crazy. And also if you're working with dull files, you got to push real hard. You're not going to have the same effect as with a sharp file. And you can see, I'm not really, I don't really have to push that hard to make it work. How many guys in the United States are doing what you do? Uh, maybe roughly. Roughly. For like surgical instruments, not like It depends Barbara. on how, you know, uh, I know of three and I know of at least four that retired recently. Um, you know, this is an old trade. So you, you can know? count them on one hand maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not too many guys like us left. They, this was not a trade that was ever taught in school. This was not, um, you know, you, ha you, you kind of had to be born into it, you know, or you had to really love this particular trade to try to come in and learn it. My dad learned because he was a hairdresser. The guy who sharpened his scissors wanted to retire. So he, he, he was like, well, I knew this was the only guy that could sharpen scissors. And he bought his business and hoped that he learned. And come to find out, he was actually kept out of World War II for his knowledge of surgical instruments. And he was one of the guys that taught me. And, and that's how we, you know, you know, that's how I learned as a small child. And, and that might have been, but that might be the reason we're talking today. Because if he was on the shores of Normandy, who knows? He never, he never who knows? would have made it. Yeah. He never would have made it. There's no way. There, there, a lot of guys, unfortunately, we lost too many. You got to have a good barber story. I know that when you were in Brooklyn, you dealt a lot with uh, hairdressers, and you got you got to have something. There's, there's tons of barber stories. Look, my, some you can tell, some some you some are buried, are buried my, with the ocean. My grandfather was a barber. He was known as Mimi the barber, and uh, the story is that this guy comes into the salon and says uh, it was barber shop. He goes, can you cut my son's hair? Nobody could cut my son's hair. So my grandfather tells him, yeah, it's no problem. You bring him in on Sunday, Sunday. I'll be here Sunday, we'll, we'll cut his hair. So he goes, okay, but you're gonna bring me the child and you're gonna leave. So he goes, seriously? He goes, yes, you, you have to leave. You, can't, you cannot be here while we're gonna do this now. So he goes, fine. So he brings him the child, father leaves, puts him on the chair. Falls off and knocks him down off the chair. Right off the bat. Doesn't even say nothing. Picks the kid back up, puts him on the chair. He goes, that was a for nothing. You move and I kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, there's a good joke in the story. Always. Always. And that's how it cuts. Just like that. So, the trick here is that it actually grabs the nail. You can actually feel it grab the nail. So you can actually feel what you're cutting. Awesome. Now, before we, uh, before we move on. Up first, yeah. Because you can see what it looks like, right? It's got all kind of, you know, it's got all kinds of bumps and lumps and, and stuff. So you're going to grind that out now? So we're going to polish it up real quick. Okay. I'm not going to tell you more stories. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to get you in trouble. Uh, my grandfather can't get you now. See the sparks coming off. You're literally at the grindstone. All day long. My entire life. Now when people want to reach out to you, you're 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 pretty good with uh, being available. What's how do they how, contact you? You can yep. see how oh, I this is beautiful. how I reshaped it. You know, and, yep. and, and made it, you know, even again. Finishing grinder. Yes, every, you know, it's every, everything has a different grit to it as we work our way down. Yeah. What I want to do here, because this here has got all kinds of things sticking up to it. I'm going to ask you to move back a little bit. Yeah. We're going to go on a little bit more aggressive wheel. 
this is actually a wheel that I made. Ben, I want to thank you. No safety you. gloves, just by feel. What did you want to tell me? I want to thank you for having me on the podcast today. Oh man, this has been awesome. Uh, this has been awesome. We're gonna we're gonna close it together with our with the with our with a salute. We're gonna have a nice meal over here. So we now the wheels don't produce their own grit, so we have to add it. And you know how how we take care of this grit is keep it airtight. Beautiful. We have one final little polish here. When you see what this is like when it's done, you're gonna be like, wow, I can't believe it. So, and, and like I said, this has been sharpened many, many times. Sometimes if it's really bad on the inside, we'll even do the inside. Back of the springs. This is all fine. This one, this one's not too bad at all. All right, so for, before we do our close, can I give that a, a little test ride? We'll switch the camera up and I'll, sure. I'll try uh, working it on my own uh, little mm. thumbnail here. Sure. Yeah, let's just turn it around and let me look at your good work here. Let's see, so I got a look, little shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like oh, All yeah. Right. Now, the you first know. thing I'm going to tell you is you cut the nail incorrectly. All right. Let's, Work with the point. Okay, okay. See, we're getting to the nuances of it here. See how the point cuts first? Yep. yep. Okay, now when the point don't cut, then it means it's time to have it serviced. Right. Okay, anytime, the, the proper working of a nail cutter, the way we sharpen them, is that the point meets first. And you can hold it up to the light of the window, squeeze it together, okay, lightly. Do it again, lightly. Okay, and lift up a little bit higher. There you go, right there. You see how that, it's got a little bit of space in the back? Yep. And then as you squeeze it. All right, Dom, it. this was fantastic. So, if people want your services, how do they get a hold of you? How do they uh, get lined up, hooked well, up? Well, they could, they could give me a call. I have my cell phone on all the time. You could look up my cell phone number on biancoinstruments.com. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm right here in Virginia. You respond to emails. I respond to emails. Uh, obviously, I answer my phone even when I'm on vacation. <laughs> Biancoinstruments.com. Okay. Yep. Fair enough. Fair enough. And then, you know, also, um, I have one question. I said, uh, you sure. know, you, we, we tried the nail cutter downstairs, but you didn't, you know, and, and you know, I kind of commented that you, you did it a little bit wrong. I know, I learned something. It's great. This yeah. is what this podcast is about. You always can pick up a little tip, which how is to it, use the tip right. more than the belly of the, of the instrument. But most of all, how did it look? How did it feel? And how did oh, it look? It was, it's fantastic. It yeah, it was like cutting through butter instead go. of a nail. So... Salut to you, and as we say in my old country, Lachayim, it was it was great. It was great. Thank you, Dom. It's nice, nice to be here. Thank you. Cheers, everybody.